everyone. Welcome back to the Wood Gasifier Builders Workshop. Like many of you, I purchased the book, The Wood Gasifier Builders Bible by Ben Peterson, many years ago. I actually purchased the very first edition and every uh, edition, subsequent edition since then. So what I wanted to do is kind of walk through my experience in this build uh, when I started this uh, six years ago, <coughs> and then uh, fast forward to where we are today. So basically when, uh, when I bought the book uh, back in 2016, uh, I was very excited. Uh, all the 200 pictures and detailed uh, instructions, it seemed like uh, it was a pretty straightforward build for me. Uh, I spent thousands of dollars tooling up my shop, getting equipment, uh, welders, cutters, roller, everything I needed to uh, build this gas fire. Then I ended up spending around 3,000 bucks in parts. Uh, for the gas fire. So the book uh, was way off as far as its estimate that you could build this thing back in 2014 for 1500 bucks. Uh, it, was, it wasn't true then and it's certainly not true today. Uh, so anyway, so um, I went through and um, I followed the book uh, step by step. Uh, I cut every part by hand. I did all the welding, self-welded. Um, and this is what I ended up with. Uh, $3,000 cost in about six months of time, and this is what I call fondly call my 600-pound paperweight. It is not a successful build. Well, I could get it to work. There's just so many issues and problems um, that I just can't classify this as a successful build. But uh, I learned a lot through the process, and what I decided was I didn't want to have other people that, in my situation that bought the book and went out thinking that they could just follow the instructions and come up with a fully functional gasifier. So I learned during the build, I learned uh, some of the many issues that's uh, in the design, safety issues, uh, lack of instructions, uh, um, uh, many things that uh, over time I learned the correct way to build it, learned to make it safer, uh, added many enhancements and to where we are today. But basically, this is the basic design in the book. Um, with, and on the back of the book, he has what he calls optional enhancements. Now, I figured since they were optional, I didn't really need them. Um, that's not really true. I'll go into that in a second. But basically, this is the gasifier that's uh, reflected in the book. And it said, I went through, followed everything bit step by step, cut every part by hand. This is all one big solid welded component, which is one of the one of the issues I have with the design. But I'll kind of walk through and show you what I learned during this build process. So the first thing that you can see on the reactor tank is you can see that the paint is burned away right around where the uh, hearth is. Uh, this shows that the heat is escaping from the hearth, and one of his uh, optional enhancements is external insulation. Um, and so what I found is that if you're not going to put in all the enhancements, don't bother to build it. Don't bother to waste your time and money building this thing. You need what he calls all uh, optional enhancements, the external insulation around the reactor, external insulation around the heat exchange, uh, internal stainless steel liner that's insulated, uh, Venturi air jets, you need all of that. And if you're not going to do that, don't even bother with the build because you'll end up like this 600 pound paperweight and you'll have, it'll be a very, an exercise in frustration. So one of the first things I found, uh, the flaw in the design is, is the, the width of the base. Now width of that base in his original design is only 16 inches. It's very, very top heavy. If you put wheels on it, let alone if you try to put a hopper on this, it'll just tip over with the slightest push. That's very dangerous. This thing weighs about 600, over 600 pounds. Having this thing fall over on you is a, is a very severe danger. Um, the next thing is in the propane tanks. The use of propane tanks, well, you can use that to try to save money. Uh, propane tanks are very dangerous. And if you're using used propane tanks and you don't purge them correctly, you're on the risk of blowing yourself up. The book doesn't do nearly enough to discuss the dangers associated with propane tanks. Um, and uh, there should be a lot more discussion around uh, working with propane tanks and the proper way to purge them. Uh, on top of that, his measurements, are he, he references the propane tank and he'll say, from the top seam of this propane tank, measure down so many inches and cut a hole, measure down so many inches and cut another hole. 
Um, but what he doesn't tell you is if you're not using the exact su uh, same propane tank uh, dimensions, uh, you're going to cut the holes in all the wrong places. Um, propane tanks, even though they may nominally be 25 gallon, depending on the year the tank was made, the actual physical dimensions of the tank will vary. So this, uh, the, the tank reflected in his book refers to a tank that's 42 inches at the top weld. If you went down to Walmart or uh, uh, at Home Depot and bought a propane tank today, the dimension to that top weld is only going to be about uh, 30, uh, 38, 39 inches. So if you followed all the directions in the book and just measured down from that seam and started cutting holes, you'd have all your holes cut in the wrong places. So that's a second problem. Uh, next problem is this is all one solid welded component. The base, the reactor, the filter, heat exchange, cooling assembly, a gas exit, it's all one welded assembly. So if you've got a problem with any of these things, the reactor, the filter, the uh, cooling, uh, the whole, the whole uh, system is non-functional and you can't change it. <coughs> You'd have to cut it apart to make any changes. So this is something that uh, definitely had to be changed as well. <coughs> And this is the gas exit assembly here with the blower. You see the cooling assembly. And then on the back here, we have a, a welded uh, battery holder. Uh, we, have, we have the box down here with two switches, one for the grate and um, one for the blower. So it's a very basic design. And this kind of got me started on my journey six years ago is... I didn't want to have other users of this book to go down the same path that I did and end up with a 600-pound paperweight. So what I did, I learned from this process. I learned where the, the faults were in the original design, some of the safety issues, um, and then we, we decided to uh, start addressing these. We, we basically made these as enhancements. And so what I'll do now is I'll kind of fast forward to where we are today six years later and show you basically what we've done. Uh, but anyway, so this is this is a step-by-step -step process of following the instructions in the book, and uh, the final result was a 600-pound paperweight. All right, now let's fast forward six years and show you where we're at today. All right, so here we are. So fast forwarding to six years to today, this is where we're at with this gasifier. I've been building this gasifier now for six years and each time the, the build gets better we come up with better ways of making it safer easier to build and better functionality so I'll go through and show you some of the things that we've done first thing is the width of the base you see down there we've increased the width of this base now to 26 inches so now it's much more stable if you got it on wheels or if you want to put a hopper on it, it's got a much more stable platform. You don't have to worry about this 600-pound uh, gas fire falling over on you. Then we, we added a heat shield at the bottom to separate the, the heat from the bottom of the reactor to the battery box. We've added on the switch box, we've got extra switches. We've got a switch for the blower, switch for the grate. We have an optional switch for a glow plug start. Um, and then we have a potentiometer switch to control the speed of the blower. Uh, all very needed enhancements. The battery box is removable. So you can take the battery box off if you don't need it. You can just wire 12 volt directly to a generator if that's what you're running. Uh, so the battery box is there, but it can be uh, removed uh, for, for moving it around. We've added two auxiliary ports in the back, one over here and one over here. Auxiliary ports are very nice because they give you access directly into the hearth. So rather than just having to go through the sight glass for the ignition port as you do on the original design, now we can leave the sight glass there so we can see what's going on in the hearth. And we could put a glow plug, for example, or we could put another uh, thermocouple sensor in there to measure the temperature, or we could do uh, water drip or uh, several other things. So now you've got uh, other accesses directly into the hearth, which is uh, extremely functional. You can see here on the outside of the reactor, we've got the external insulation. So we've got both the reactor and the heat exchange wrapped with insulation. This makes a huge difference. Uh, when you're getting up to temperature, you gotta try to reach temperatures over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. You're not gonna get to those temperatures unless you've got this thing super insulated. Inside the hearth, we've got a stainless steel liner that is also insulated. So we basically got two layers of this uh, insulation that's rated up to 2,500 degrees. Um, 
We also have the, the uh, Venturi Air Jet. So all these, what Ben calls in his book is enhancements. Uh, we don't consider them enhancements. Basically, you need this for a fully functional gas fire that's going to be optimal. Um, next thing that you'll notice is it's modular. It's no longer one big solid welded assembly. It's broken down into separate components. The base, the reactor, the filter, the cooling assembly, the condensate tube in the back. It's all modular. It can be disassembled. Well, several reasons for that. One, it's easier to build. You can build each sub-assembly separately. You can test it uh, separately, do the leak testing. And it also allows you to do different variations. Maybe you want to do hot filtering. Maybe you want to add a cyclone filter. You can do these things by reconfiguring the system with components. Add your own cooling assembly. Maybe you want more cooling tubes. So you've got a lot more flexibility in this platform than you do with the original design. So um, we call this our V3. The V1, we refer to Ben's uh, book, which is regardless of which edition, He's actually got four editions of that book, first published in 2014. Um, all the, he hasn't changed one word, one picture, one uh, set of instructions in, since the original version. He's basically cut and pasted the design in all the subsequent versions. So version two we called uh, when we just made it modular and wider base. And then version three, uh, last year, we eliminated the propane tanks completely. Propane tanks are dangerous. And uh, you really need to be careful working around purging used propane tanks. We eliminated propane tanks and went to our own housing. Made a huge difference in the build. It's much easier to build. The housings have the holes already pre-cut, so you can't screw up where the holes go for any of the parts. Uh, it makes it much simpler, much quicker, and a much tighter fit as well. Uh, so this is our V3. Uh, and uh, it's our latest and greatest, and it's a much, much be uh, uh, bigger improvement than the original design that's referenced in those, in those books. All right, everyone, so kind of summarizing, if, um, if you've got the book or you're going to get the book, regardless of which version that you use, the design in the book is exactly the same, instructions are exactly the same, nothing's been updated in uh, eight years. Um, be very careful, I do not advise that you build this gasifier by using only the reference in this book. There's a lot of uh, uh, safety issues, there's some downright mistakes, and there's some omissions. Uh, for example, one of the biggest omissions in, in, the, in these books is the total lack of discussion around leak testing. And if I had to pick one thing that affects whether you're going to have a, a successful build or not successful build, it's going to be the issue of leak testing. Separating uh, the gas from air and not letting air leak into the system is crucial to the way a, ga a wood gasifier operates. And in the book, he makes some passing references about gas tight welds or leak testing at the end of your build. If you follow instructions and do that, I can promise you, you'll end up with a 600 pound paperweight. You must do leak testing as you build by subassembly, because the very nature of it, it's a layered system, especially in the reactor. Um, if you do not do leak testing on some of these internal welds and then you add a layer to it, you can't go back in later on and fix it. Uh, so uh, I've worked with numerous welders over the last six years of all types of certifications, professional welders, and I can tell you that in the six years that we've been building these, I have not had a single build that has not had leaks. Now having a leak is not a problem as long as you discover the leak and you fix the leak. But if you don't, you'll end up with a 600 pound paperweight. So that's my advice. The book I still reference, that, uh, uh, recommend that you can have this book as a great general reference. Do not rely on it 100% for, uh, for your build. Uh, I would suggest that you get some additional assistance by attending a workshop, watching some of our workshop uh, videos, uh, maybe consider getting a parts kit. Uh, have, if you don't have confidence in your welding skills, have somebody weld it for you, or somebody like us, or one of our network of builders around the country that we can refer you to that, that's familiar with the, the uh, assembly of one of these gasifiers. Uh, so that's about it. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Uh, good luck on your build, and see you next time.